If you have a new P1S or P1P, or heck, maybe even X1 Carbon, then stick around because I'm going to show you some must print items that you're going to want to get coming out of that machine. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a fun little adventure that we're going to go on together. We're going to talk about some must print items that you can uh, print for your P1S, the P1P, or heck, even the X1 Carbon if you have one of those. And really, it's not going to cost you a whole lot more than really the cost of filament. So before we get into it, I want you to, to think and see if you can guess what my number one must print item is. It's not on the table here, and I won't reveal it until the end. But go in the comments below and tell me what you think it is, or go ahead and drop a comment of something that you consider a must print item, and maybe you'll see if, uh, we'll see if it made the list. So let's get into it. The first item we're going to talk about is the poop bin. You got to have one of these. Now, there are tons of them out there, and I'm going to link everything that uh, I can in the video here. But this is the first one that I printed, and I've continued to use it. Now, this design was made to sit here right on the curve of the printer, uh, but when I put mine on these uh, blocks, I just haven't put anything uh, to make this big enough. So it still works. I just use it kind of in this fashion here, and it collects the poop, and it does the job. Now this one I think is uh, maybe one or two walls of construction, and uh, it did split a little bit when I squeezed it, but you know what? It still works. I've had it for quite a while now and no need to replace it. The next item we're going to talk about is one that I'm really glad I found. You may not even realize that it's in the picture right now, but what we're talking about is this installation plate guide right here. Now, the P1S and the P1P, and I'm not sure what's on the X1 Carbon, but they have this little tiny kind of low profile guide back here, but I can't tell you the number of times that I put in a plate and I ended up with the corner of my plate on top of that guide, which of course is going to mess up your print. And since before I didn't have the light in here, it was dark, it was hard to see. But with this guide right here, it's, it's higher than the, uh, the stock ones, and so it always makes putting the plate in perfect every time uh, so much easier. That is something that you really need to print. The next must print item I want to tell you about is this piece right here. But before I do that, let's take a little break for a word from our sponsor. You know, as makers, we often pride ourselves in our own capabilities and the tools that we amass to allow us to bring our creative visions to life. But what do you do when you've reached a point where maybe the tools that you have aren't sufficient to bring a new idea to life? Well, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by PCB Way. PCBWay excels in the most advanced 3D printing technologies such as stereolithography or SLA, selective laser sintering or SLS, and they can even work with metals using selective laser melting or SLM. And they don't just specialize in 3D printing. PCBWay makes printed circuit boards. So if you've got a project that you're working on and you want to take it from the breadboard to a circuit board, you definitely want to check out PCBWay. All right, now back at it. It's really exciting to have sponsors, so thanks for sticking with me through that. So what we have here is a little um, device that makes it so much easier to remove the PTFE tube um, from the buffer here. So I've already got this one removed just to show you, but it's just gonna sit on here. Now you don't have to take this off. It's actually really difficult to get this out. There's a little press connector, but because it's recessed back in here, it's really hard to get to. And once you push this in, it's not coming out until you get something in there. So this little guy, um, this was actually designed by uh, one of my buddies uh, on, from the YouTube channel, and he shared this with me. But this is just gonna simply go in here and it's got little catches, so once you get it lined up, it'll just stay right there. You don't, once you uh, install it, it's just gonna be there. And now you can push this piece in and pull your tube out really easy. And I'll tell you, it's a whole lot easier than dealing. You can remove it from here, but that's a whole other, it's a whole other ball game. So, you know, if you're removing your AMS, you pop that cord out, now you've got this 
quick release, now my AMS is free, I can take it off. I can tell you, I almost never remove this thing because it's always so much, you know, trying to get it disconnected uh, from everything. But now with having this little uh, part on here, and I'll be honest, I just found out about it. He told me about it and I was like, holy cow, that is great. I am definitely adding it to my list of must print items. The next item on our must print guide, uh, the actually the next couple of items, these are only really important if you have an AMS. Now, I've had mine since I got the P1S, I got it as a combo, and I'll tell you, this is a lifesaver. Um, it serves a couple different purposes. One, it, uh, the main idea is the riser, it gets the AMS up a little bit higher, which, which allows you um, to raise the glass because by default, uh, the drag chain and the little PTF tube uh, that are in there will drag on the glass, which is not good. But this riser allows the glass uh, to, to raise up a little bit. I gotta take my little duck off there, but it raises the glass up. Now it's a little tricky for me to get this out of here because I have uh, the Panda Touch on here, but it raises the glass and I went ahead and printed a couple of TPU barriers here so that it remains mostly sealed um, when I need to. But if I need to take it out, I can take the glass out and it has a storage place right here. Not only does it allow you to do that and hold your AMS, but it has some additional features. So we've got a slot here where I can put extra build plates and then we have some storage drawers here where I've got little filament clips and you can put your tools um, in here as well. So I've got all of the tools, extra spaces uh, for my uh, nozzles, all that good stuff. So right there. So again, really super, super useful. And I highly recommend that you print one of these if you have the AMS. Now we'll move right upstairs. So with the AMS, by default, you have a couple little slots in the back that you can put some desiccant packets in or you could put desiccant in, but then it would you'd have to really uh, take everything out to pour that out and dry them. So um, I've printed uh, these, and again, I'll put a link in there, but these are desiccant holders. So I've got uh, the beaded desiccant with the color changing uh, balls in there, but there's uh, these three pieces, and then you can see the center one there has a space for a hygrometer. Uh, that you will have to purchase separately if you choose to do this. And then in the back of the unit, there are two uh, more holders which replace uh, the covers. Or actually, I think they go in and the covers still go on. But uh, those go in there so you can put a bunch of desiccant into your AMS and keep your filament nice and dry. Highly recommend that you print that as well if you have the AMS. Another item that you'll find handy to print is this little ramp here. Um, you can see how occasionally you can get some debris down here in the bottom of the chamber. And, you know, sweeping it out, you can get it, but then you have this lip here, so it's kind of difficult uh, to get anything out of there unless you just want to individually pick, pick up the pieces. But if you print this ramp here, um, then now you have the ability to just, oh, if I actually lock it, there's these little clips here on the side, but now you have a ramp and you have the ability to scoop things right on out. And of course, you know, if you had a little brush or something like that, that might make things a little bit easier, but makes your cleanup a whole lot easier. So definitely recommend printing this. The next item that I recommend that you print is one for those of you that may not have an AMS or, and we'll get to this in a second, um, if you use the external spool here, well, you have to, um, this is the, the included holder for that. And right now I have it detached and you'll see why in a second. But this is a standard bamboo uh, spool and you'll see because of the, the way that they route the PTFE tube and the, the length of this thing, if you use any different um, style spools that are slightly wider, and I've heard Amazons are, um, then you run out of room here. So we have this creation right here, with a, which is a spool extender. So that's going to snap into these grooves here. And then you do actually have to flip it around. You can see originally it says top and it is keyed so that it's supposed to go in this way. But with this adapter here, you're going to mount it this direction. And now you have a much longer um, spool holder to hold your spool. So you won't have that limitation if you are end up, or if you do use wider spools. So definitely if you are using external spools, 
then this is a great addition to your P1S or your P1P. Um, and again, I don't have an X1 carbon, but maybe great for that too. The next item that I highly recommend you print is this little Y adapter here. So if you are somebody that tends to use um, the manual uh, non-AMS filament in addition to the AMS unit, then this Y adapter comes in handy. So all you need is a small piece of PTFE tube. So this is the normal configuration here that just uh, goes in there and that allows the AMS to feed into the printer. Um, but with this little Y adapter, as you can see, you can feed in some filament here. So when you're not using the AMS, because remember the AMS always retracts all of your filament. So you can have this here and that just is going to give you this always available port so that you don't have to disconnect this. If you've got um, your filament, you can throw that on here. You can put that directly and feed it into the printer. And then if you're not using um, any of your external non-AMS filament, you can just take that off you leave this part uh, attached and you're always good to go. So another item that I highly recommend that you print for your printer. The next item that I recommend printing is this little dust cap here. So what we have, these are your Z-axis screws and at the top you have a bearing here. And this bearing, it's probably a sealed bearing, but you know, sometimes it's good to just take a little extra measure. You can print these little dust caps and there's one on the left side and then there's also one on the right side and I think the one in the back is actually covered so you can't see it um, and it's you can't get access to it but one for the uh, left side one for the right side but go ahead print those out pop them on and you'll just have a little extra measure of protection for those bearings all right so there you have it many many items that I highly recommend that you print for your P1S P1P maybe even the X1 carbon um, but we're not done yet did you guess what my number one most recommended item for you to print is? Remember, drop them down in the comments. You know, the YouTube algorithm favors highly interactive, you know, viewers. Uh, so that's why I ask, help me out. But did you guess? Let me show you my number one most highly recommended item. I have to reach back here because it's right on my work table. It's this guy right here. Other than, again, other than the cost of the filament, it doesn't cost you anything to print it because Bamboo is kind enough to give you this little packet here. They give you the screws for the scraper, they give you some tape, and they give you the blade. And uh, I believe it's even on the SD card. So you print this out, and man, I will tell you, if you remember back, back to one of my very first videos, um, I recommended this guy you know, these 3D printed scrapers, because uh, I was afraid this, this was gonna scratch the, uh, you know, the texture, the bed. Um, but I'll tell you, these things, uh, they just don't last. So scraping, you know, this hard filament uh, off the bed, uh, these little guys are good for a couple uses and then they're, they're no good. But boy, I tell you, I use this thing all the time. Not only scraping the bre bed, but breaking, um, you know, if you have supports, uh, one of the parts that I make and sell i have a lot of supports on there so having this in there to to get in and pry this is this is the tool that i just love um way safer than like a razor blade i have cut myself using stuff like this you know when i shouldn't be as opposed to using this tool here so don't hesitate print the scraper use the scraper all right folks that's going to wrap us up again i would like to uh Thank PCB Way once again for sponsoring this video. If you haven't checked out their website, go ahead and do that. Uh, they have so much to offer, whether it's 3D printing, um, printed circuit boards, CNC milling, you name it, they do it. Go check them out. As always, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, I would appreciate it if you take a moment, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you know when I drop new content. We've got so many exciting things coming up on the channel. Um, just got a new fiber laser. I'm excited to bring that into the, uh, to the video rotation as well. So as always, let's just keep on learning, burning, printing together. Take care, everyone.